What's up guys, Ivan Carranza here and welcome to Bass Tone Tuesday. Today, we're going to talk about one thing that you can do that will improve your tone, your technique, and your overall playing, and that is to record yourself. Now, why would you want to record yourself when playing? Well, recording yourself is a brutally honest way to assess your playing, because there is no hiding you know, all the mistakes or the little nuances that are in your playing when you listen back to a recording. Now, ideally, you would do this with a recording interface, which I am using right now to record this video, and using a DAW, so a digital audio workstation. And that is ideal because then you can you know, recording the program and set a tempo, use a metronome, a click, or a drum loop, for example, but you can see all the subdivisions in the recording. So you can clearly see in the waveform of your playing if you are rushing the tempo, dragging the tempo, or also you can hear and see the representation of your sound wave if there are any passages that are, for example, too loud, or too quiet, or something is not played as cleanly as possible. So there you have an immediate, like no BS, honest feedback about what you just played. On top of that, you're also practicing how to deliver a better performance because sometimes you play something, you know, and, and you are like, yeah, that was that was good. Then you listen back and it was like, mm, yeah, not not really. So the more you do this, the more you record yourself and listen back, the more you're going to get used to, first of all, seeing that red light, you know, record light going off, and then you can relax and play. But then you're going to be aware of the things that you usually do when playing, and you can correct or improve upon them. So your performance, your overall performance, whether you're recording or playing live, is most likely going to improve. Like I mentioned, ideally you would use a recording interface and a DAW, and there are really, really cheap interfaces nowadays. You can get one for like 30 euros or 30 dollars. It doesn't have to be like high tech, you just need to be able to record things. Um, and a DAW, if you're a Mac user like me, your Mac or MacBook comes with GarageBand, so you can use that and it's free. If you want to upgrade, you can upgrade to Logic, for example. If you're a PC user or a Windows user, there are a couple of options there. Uh, a very cheap one that's good is Reaper, no affiliation whatsoever. I think it costs like 60 bucks, which is way, way cheaper than Pro Tools, for example. So you can start there and upgrade at some point later if you want. But having those two tools is very, very useful. Now, if you don't have an interface or you don't want to spend more money, you're most likely watching this video either on your phone or a tablet, right? And those probably have also a video camera. So you can use that as well to record yourself. So you can just turn on a metronome or a drum loop and or even a playback song, right? And just play along and record yourself. And here you really have to be honest with yourself and listen to all the nuances of your playing and listen if you are rushing or dragging or if, you, if you're not playing as cleanly. Now, a phone recording is not as ideal, like I mentioned, as a recording direct because there's reverb in the room, uh, the quality of the recording is not as clear, but it's still very, very useful. So you can just hit record or film yourself and play a song or a bass line and, you know, a, a, an exercise and listen back and, and also see yourself because that way you can also see if you're, I don't know, maybe tensing up when playing certain passages or your wrist angle is not ideal. Maybe you can correct your technique that way. And those are all things that are going to contribute to you becoming a better player and improving your technique, your sound, and your fluidity, and also staying relaxed when you are recording. Because at some point you might want to record with a couple of friends, maybe in a band, or you're hired to record and play bass for somebody else. 
and knowing how it feels like to be you know on record mode is very very useful so i would recommend recording yourself as much as possible i've been recording myself for a couple of years already i think i got my first interface in 20 uh, no 2008 maybe if not earlier it was a cheap Tascam one and I started using GarageBand to record and I remember that when I got my first nice bass it was a, it was a five string bass um, and I would play through my amp you know I thought everything was actually pretty pretty good that the extra string didn't require that much of a change but when I wanted to record something there was constantly a ringing string because my right hand wasn't muting properly and recording direct like i said is a very very honest and you know brutally honest feedback so you hear every little detail and i could hear like this the string ringing all the time because i wasn't muting the strings properly so that led me to improve my muting technique and those are things that you might also encounter when you start doing that i hope you can benefit from this and like i said if you don't want to spend more money in an interface and a DAW, you can also do it with your phone. What matters is that you have to be honest with yourself and be humble enough to go back to the practice room and work on the little details to, you know, correct and improve your playing. That's gonna be it for today. As always, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments. And also, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay up to date with the content that's coming to the channel. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Take care.